This week on Discover Oklahoma, planning your spring break in our great state will ramp it up for you from nostalgia and dining with a view to exploring outer space. Travel with AAA's Discover Oklahoma. Hi and welcome to Triple A's Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dino Lawley. We're coming to you from the Sam Noble Museum in Norman, one of our state's great treasures. It is, and we're just outside the brand new Ramp It Up exhibit where skateboarding is taking center stage here at one of our state's largest museums. Once you get into this exhibit and really take a look at it, you understand why. Bright colors, bold lettering, and boards that are anything but boring. The Ramp It Up exhibit tells the history of skateboarding. We go back several thousands of years to the indigenous people of the Hawaiian Islands and throughout the Pacific, and they rode the waves on boards. And not only that, but they had this method of land surfing. I guess you know, this would be akin to, the, to the, the boards that we use on the beaches today, but they actually had devices that allowed them to roll on the, on the land and to enjoy that, that type of pursuit. And as curator Dan Swan explains, skateboarding plays a significant role in the lives of many Native Americans today. It's amazing the ways in which um, skateboarding has really taken off in Native communities. It obviously has provided this opportunity for Native youth to come together in a neutral and safe environment and to basically just be kids. The boards in this exhibit from the Smithsonian Institution don't just look cool, most tell a story rich with history. So they're using this as an opportunity to put it right out there, what's happened to the native land base here in, in North America. I mean, they begin in, in 1491 when the, what we now call the United States was entirely native territory. Uh, the colonies slowly encroach on this until suddenly here we are in 1990 and native peoples are confined to these incredibly remote, oftentimes desolate reservation environments which is exactly why skate parks resonate. Dan Swan says this exhibit shatters the stereotypes of skaters. More importantly, these skate parks provide these opportunities to utilize a healthy lifestyle, to encourage exercise and a healthy lifestyle. Um, to, they're oftentimes built in conjunction with community health centers. So there's this fitness aspect to the whole thing. But then there's these undertones that a number of communities have, have utilized and to have accessed in order to reinforce the traditional social values that are important to social cohesion and, and the social fabric of communities. And shows that the sport and the support of skate parks in general can bring entire communities together. We want people to recognize that these are incredible examples of grassroots movements of local people trying to work with their youth and provide opportunities. This is a wonderful model of the types of things that we can affect and, and bring uh, to uh, every community so that um, our entire society is enriched. This time of the year has Oklahomans thinking about spring break trips. So there's a very good chance at some point you'll be driving down I-35 with your family. Well, how about a pit stop that all started with a kid's collection? Barbara Murch takes us to the Toy and Action Figure Museum in Paul's Valley. It all started with a small Oklahoma town's quest for tourists. Well, the museum got its start in the year 2000. A group of citizens got together and decided they wanted to plan our growth for the next 10 years. So uh, out of these meetings came some of the ideas and concepts that they wanted to have uh, to bring to Paul's Valley. And that is how curator Kevin Stark's dream, the Toy and Action Figure Museum, was born. We started working on putting the ideas together and we it took several years to get the legal stuff done, to find a proper building, get it remodeled. A storefront turned museum that Stark says is more than just fun and games. A lot of people think, they just don't think about how our toys created. And so what they do is uh, they think they just appear. You know, no, there's a lot of work to it. And, and artists and you know sculptors, they work very hard to make good toys. It's hard work indeed. So I research all the displays and then I personally build the displays. Uh, so now this is a display on Hawkman. So we're gonna give the history of the character 
uh, how he came about, when he first came about, uh, things like that. And then what we try to do is showcase the different uh, characters or different types of action figures that have been created for that character. And we've also included Hot Girl. You know, Hot Girl is important. Each display, most of them assembled from his personal collections, tells some kind of a story. We've got uh, the European campaign on this side, and we've added uh, a surprise visitor in there. We put Captain America in there because we felt like it needed some color, and he fought in World War II, so we've got that going. And he makes sure to get important messages across, too. Okay, now this is an important display right here because in the action figure world, everyone thinks of it, it's really more of a boy's toy, okay? Uh, so we have built this display to showcase the super girls that are out there. So we've got Hot Girl and Bat Girl and Super Girl and Storm, She-Hulk, things like that. Lots of female characters that are out there. While the big displays are hands off, kids do get a chance to play. We thought it would be torturous to tell a little kid, you're going to an action figure museum, but you can't touch anything. So we made sure there were things you could touch. So the guys get to come in here. Guys and girls get to play with the action figures, things like that. And the chance to take something a little off the wall home with them. Okay, what kind of a super action figure museum would we be without superhero underwear? So we have superhero underwear here. Now, I spotted this in a store, a department store, and I thought, oh, I, I've got to have these. i got to put them in the museum, you know? Well, we put them in the museum, and we've had people actually try to take them off the wall and purchase them. And I, so we, we had to start carrying them in the gift shop. <laughs> Displays change and grow through the years. But as for the museum's future, well, you can say it's pretty bright. You know, some days I think I'm going to just quit collecting, and then a new toy line comes out. i got to have it. Well, for us, when we take a road trip, whether it's two miles or 200 miles, we've got to stop for lunch. And here at the Sam Noble, you don't even have to go anywhere. Because they have the wonderful Red Bud Cafe. And this isn't the only attraction serving up delicious dishes right in the middle of all the fun. Up next, eating at the gardens. Plus, we're headed to T-Town, get ready to blast off from the Tulsa Air and Space Museum when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues. On the road, one never knows what lies ahead. Indubitably, almost every week, one encounters bad form from Sunday drivers. Sheer rudeness begets the occasional fender bender. Precisely why we have insurance from AAA. Hear, hear. A name drivers can trust. Especially good ones. Especially great ones. Cheers! Circles in the sky. We know we belong to the land. And the land we belong to is red. And when we say, Yay! We're only saying you're doing fine, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oklahoma, come see for yourself. Until there's an accident rewind button, there's the next best thing, insurance from AAA. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. We're coming to you from the Sam Noble Museum in Norman. Talking about air and space now, and your first thought when we bring that up might be something like the Johnson Space Center down in Houston or Cape Canaveral or Cape Kennedy in Florida. Possibly, possibly, maybe, but, but Oklahoma, of course, has an incredible mm -hmm. aviation history, and in fact, the sky's the limit at the Tulsa Air and Space Museum. At the Tulsa Air and Space Museum, you can explore Tulsa's rich aviation history, even dating back to where it all began, at a balloon ascension in 1897 to the work currently being done here for the International Space Station. Our museum is broken up into eras, more or less. We have the uh, early birds, which features Tulsa's first com uh, commercial airport called uh, McIntyre Airport. 
and they can learn about the important events that happened there at McIntyre that led to the building of Tulsa Municipal Airport. We have our World War II section that talks about uh, our Douglas uh, plant that we had here at the airport during World War II, which is still functioning today, but just in a different capacity. There's an exhibit that talks about the last B-24 built in Tulsa. You can discover the Jet Age section, which explores the rise of American Airlines and the commercial maintenance space they've built here, which, by the way, is one of the largest in the world. And of course, you can also learn about the space age and the participation of McDonnell Douglas and North American Rockwell and Boeing. And while on your tour of the museum, things can really take off. We have several hands-on exhibits for the kids and families. We have a shuttle launch exhibit where it, can, it takes two, it teaches them a little bit of teamwork, so it can be a, a, a son or a daughter and a mom or a dad and they go through actual milestones of, uh, of a real shuttle launch, pressing the buttons till they get down to uh, go for launch. They push the red button and a 15-foot shuttle launches to the ceiling with lights and sound. I'll admit I love aviation history, but my favorite part of the museum is this wind tunnel. It features an F-16 inside a wind tunnel, and what's so much fun is you can sit in the cockpit and you are literally at the controls. You fly the F-16 in the wind tunnel, and the only thing that makes it fly is the air from the fans moving over the wings. It's a great way to show people how every plane flies. We have traveling exhibits that uh, are always featured on our mezzanine and those are always hands-on science type exhibits. Uh, so there's all kinds of things for people to do when they visit. We of course have our planetarium, the James E. Bertelsmeyer Planetarium, where they can learn about uh, our solar system, the galaxy and the universe uh, with great uh, live shows as well as, as uh, canned uh, films. And a new addition is the MD-80 out front that soon will feature hands-on exhibits on the inside of the plane. And who knows, maybe there's a young lad who will visit the Tulsa Air and Space Museum and they will be inspired to explore the frontier of space to become the next generation of exploration, commerce, and human achievement. The Tulsa Air and Space Museum has some great programs and camps for kids. Find out more about that and their operating hours on our website, TravelOK.com. Well, I think everyone knows our great state certainly has had some rough winter weather. We've had our share, but we're tough. We mm -hmm. can take it. However, I think we're all ready for a taste of spring. While we're waiting for the flowers to bloom, we can get that sneak peek. We'll tell you where and get a great bite to eat coming up. I was sitting behind an SUV at a red stoplight, and I guess the light wasn't turning green, green fast enough for her, so she puts her SUV in reverse and backs right into my new car. I'd called her insurance several times, and they had never heard of her. We recommended that she go ahead and turn the claim in to AAA so that AAA claims adjusters could take care of her. I paid my $500 deductible to get my car fixed, and I didn't ever expect to see that money again. I didn't want her to have to be out $500 because it wasn't her fault. So that was the only question. A lot of times if there is no insurance coverage, it's hard to get the other party to pay up. Two months later, I had a check in the mail from AAA for my $500. So when I had given up on it, they were still fighting to get my money back for me. She said, guess what, I got a check in the mail. That was a good feeling for her and it made me feel good too. They've really shown me that if I ever have a problem that they're gonna, they're gonna help me fix it. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma inside the Myriad Botanical Gardens where it is always green and growing. This is a fabulous stop in Oklahoma City during any spring break trip. And while you're there, be sure and visit the newest restaurant at the Myriad Gardens, Park House. It's only been open for 90 days, but it is already proving very popular. I'm all about the view, and this restaurant is oriented to give every table just that. It was lovely on a gray midwinter day, so just imagine it when the Myriad Botanical Gardens are in full bloom, or at Christmas time with skaters or snowflakes swirling just outside, or any day at dusk. The crystal bridge at the Myriad Garden lights up, and it's just, it's a very romantic setting. But the first view that greets you here is actually this. It is a carousel of deliciousness. Good thing this isn't smell-o-vision or you might already be headed for the car because the aroma is almost overwhelming. That was not an accident. They, they built that space just for that rotisserie. 
and to be on the outside so you can walk in and get that beautiful view of the chicken and the smell. They do a lot of the chef's specials in there as well. But that rotisserie chicken is one of the best sellers here. You get a half a chicken and then two choices of any of our sides with it. It's one of the big hits. It's just the juiciest, most perfect chicken you're gonna eat. I love it and that's, that's one of the favorites. That and the um, pasta carbonara, that's a big hit too. We just changed our menu over the past month, added um, quite a few vegetarian and vegan options as well. We've got some great desserts. They do a homemade donuts and coffee, which isn't coffee, it's a coffee mousse that they make from scratch, topped with whipped cream and the chef's selection of donuts. But what food voodoo that rotisserie can do to the humble Brussels sprout is unbelievable. We tried a little bit of everything, the chicken, the fish and chips, the chicken and waffle fry nachos, the pan-seared arugula salad, the pan-seared Scottish salmon, everything was delicious. We kept seeing people run into old friends here and we ran into some also. Terry Watkins from my old news days, she had the burger and chips. I'd give it an A plus. And the other part of it's the view, because you can sit here and you're just watching everything going on in downtown, and that's so cool. I love that. Thunder fans love the convenience of a restaurant where you can park once and then swing by before or after the game, or both. They may also love the Park House beverage tribute to the team. It's our Thunder Rita. It's a reposado tequila. There's fresh lime juice, blue carousel, and a simple syrup, and it's topped with jalapeno foam. We use our orange bitters and a stencil to spray our bitters on top in the uh, shape of a lightning bolt. It's really cool. <laughs> this is a place for those who love open spaces and the urban vibe. We get compared down to New York City a lot. That big city feel in Oklahoma, and that's what we're going for. It's also a great place for romance. Just ask this young airman who proposed in the gardens and then came to celebrate the happy affirmative here at Park House. Uh, I would say this is a perfect place to do it. It has a testament of what happened today. <laughs> All that and food you can really sink your teeth in make Park House a delicious new downtown destination. And if you're looking for other great places to eat on road trips in Oklahoma, you need to check out the very popular, very informative dining guide. You can request a free copy of this or any other guide at TravelOK.com. Click on Request Free Brochures at the top of the page. Here at the Sam Noble Museum in Norman, it is easy to take a trip back in time. Now, if you want to do a little time traveling back to the old TGNY days, you've got to <laughs> head northwest from here. The exhibit to show your kids and grandkids coming up right here on AAA's Discover Oklahoma. He's been our insurance agent for the last six years, uh, but the year before that, he was the best man at my wedding. Asked him if I could quote his auto insurance, to which he said, yes, but you're going to have to beat the company I've been with for forever in order to get it. I didn't think uh, they'd be able to. So I, I took the opportunity to quote it, and I know I was able to save him about $600 a year. Man, I was just like, boom shakalaka, like, are you kidding me? He actually said that on the phone, boom shakalaka. You know, saving money with AAA means food on the table for my family. Even after he saved us tons of money, he's looked at our policy over the years and, and helped us make changes to save even more money without us asking. We offer the best of both worlds. Um, we have uh, great cu customer satisfaction through the level of service that we provide, uh, and combined with an amazingly low rate. You know, as a parent and as a husband, having insurance, uh, is a safety net because life happens. I know that AAA is going to take care of us. I don't have to worry about it. AAA is going to be there. Levi is going to be there. They're going to take care of our needs. Some of us run cattle ranches and construction crews. We run the kids to football practice and ballet class. We run out for late night dinners and away for the weekend. We run businesses, errands, households. We want what's best in the long run, never what's run of the mill. The vehicle most of us choose to help us run our lives, Ford F-Series. With one sold every 42 seconds, it's not only America's best-selling brand, it's America's best-selling brand. 37 years running. Welcome back. AAA Oklahoma makes this show possible and does a lot of other great things around our state. Here's a look at today's AAA. 
Hi, Christy Gettle here with AAA Oklahoma. Whether you're looking to hula in Hawaii, cruise the Caribbean, or take a bite out of the Big Apple, look no further than AAA Vacations. With a wide array of cruise and tour packages, our experienced travel agents will help you plan your trip down to the very last detail. You just have to pack. Plus, being a member has its perks. You're guaranteed the lowest fare, 24-7 member care protects you in case of an emergency, and you get exclusive amenities like onboard ship credits, complimentary shore excursions, private sightseeing guides, and priority venue entrance. If your schedule's flexible, watch our website for last minute deals so you can travel more for a whole lot less. Exceptional service, exclusive experiences, and exciting rewards. AAA Vacations give you the best vacation available anywhere you want to go. To learn more, visit AAA.com. AAA for the ones who matter most to you. I'm not saying that we're old, Dino, but we can Please. both remember the old days of TG&Y. In fact, I pulled a spool of thread out of my sewing kit the other day that was from TG&Y. It had the little orange tag on it, remember? It was 19 cents. <laughs> I think you need to clean out your bag more often. I, I think. Really do. <laughs> well, of course, I remember very well, and right now there's a group of people who have all come together to make sure that everyone remembers this very well-known store. So we're going to head up to Kingfisher to the Chisholm Trail Museum. Do you remember the slogan, your best buy is at TGNY? I do. I have fond memories of going to the TGNY on Saturdays with my grandparents. This exhibit called TGNY, an original Oklahoma icon, is a nostalgic and educational trip down memory lane. We try to get the feel that people are going back to the store and they remember the days of the downtown store where they'd go and shop for certain items and, and uh, that are no more. And so. Uh, that's kind of the feel we want people to remember TGY for what it was. And TGY was a wonderful family oriented variety store started by three gentlemen R.A. Young, E.L. Goslin, and R.E. Tomlinson. They each had their individual five and dime stores but decided to pool their talents and created their own merchandising company called TGY. R.A. Young's five and dime store was in Kingfisher, and now by visiting the exhibit, you can see some of the reasons that TGY was so popular. They can see collector's items, um, items that would have been sold uh, at the TGNY stores from early on through the 70s and 80s. Uh, there's, there's dolls that were sold in 49 and 50, uh, Barbies, you know, sets and everything, uh, uh, two original uh, shopping carts, um, and, and that's as far as the items, more toys. Uh, we have a truck, a, a few trucks that were sold as toys. You can also see documents that were important to the history of the individuals who started the company as well as employees. From what I've, the stories I've been told and what I've read, um, it was a wonderful family atmosphere. Uh, the lifeblood were the owners and the um, um, supervisors at, at the top and then the workers themselves. Did you know, for example, that TGNY was the first Oklahoma-based company ever to reach a billion dollars in sales? That's right, I said a billion dollars with a B. And at the peak of the company's success, they had two billion dollars in sales. Hal Pettit is a former vice president of merchandising and worked for TGNY for 24 years. The customers loved us. Uh, they still, you can still talk to people, oh, I love TGNY. I wish they were still here. But uh, we catered to the family. I mean, we had variety store merchandise uh, that catered to the family. And then when we went into the family centers, we catered to the sportsman and uh, the home builder, I mean, the homemaker. And uh, we just, it was a great, great company. And from what you can discover from visiting the exhibit and listening to what Mr. Pettit says, one of the big secrets to the company's success was how they treated customers. Just having the customer's needs in mind. I mean, just trying to fulfill what they needed. I mean, if they asked for an item enough times, that item would show up on the shelves. And another man who agrees is Dennis Muckenberg. His store called Designs by Dennis is the same building where Mr. Young opened his five and dime in 1927 and later became the TGNY in Kingfisher. And by the way, many of the items you'll find in the exhibit have been donated by Mr. Muckenberg. It's important because of the history of, of Kingfisher and of the United States and of retail. There's lots of different facets to the importance of it. 
A big thanks to the folks here at the Sam Noble Oklahoma Museum of Natural History for hosting us this week. And as you can see from all the activity behind us, the kids love this place. It's well worth a visit. And if you have been here before, there's always something new to see. It's a good place to visit. Coming up next week, by the way, on AAA's Discover Oklahoma, more spring break in Oklahoma ideas where you can go to see bald eagles up close and personal along with a buffalo herd. And who doesn't love rock and roll? The museum exhibit all about it right here next week. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.